guys, it's me Vampy. I posted a picture of these cute little origami bats that I'd been making on socials the other day and a lot of people reached out asking me how to make them. There is a few resources online but they're a little bit tricky to follow so today I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step instruction video on how to make an origami bat. I usually make them out of black paper because I like the way they look and micro bats generally are quite dark brown black sort of colour. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to do it with white paper just so you can see it on this surface here. So this sheet of paper is about 20 by 20 centimetres. I've just cut the edge off an A4 sheet of paper. You can make them smaller if you like. The smaller and more fiddly they are, the harder it's going to be. You can also make them a little bit bigger but that might be a little bit difficult as well. And yeah, this is the size that I used to get this outcome. So um, I'll show you with this sheet of paper here. Don't stress if you miss a step. Uh, there is a lot of steps to this origami bat and you'll probably have to watch this video a couple of times anyway, but you can just follow along as best as you can and once you've made it a couple of times, you'll be able to do it from memory. Cool, let's get started. So the first thing that we're gonna do is fold it in half diagonally like this. Like I said before, I'm not an origami expert, but the crisper you can get your lines, the better it's gonna be. So I always push down as hard as I can. I usually use my nails as well, uh, just to help that line get really, really flat. Then we're gonna open it up and do the same the opposite way here. And again, this, this sheet of paper is probably not a perfect square because I didn't have any square white paper. But for this type of origami, you don't actually see the edges, so it doesn't really matter. So now we've done the two half folds, we're gonna flip the sheet of paper over. And we're gonna do another half fold, this way into a rectangle. Just make sure you match up those corners as best as you can. So these are all pre-folds, so we're going to be folding these and then unfolding them all. So it will make more sense when we start actually making the bat shape. So we open that up and then we're going to fold this long edge into the middle. The first couple of bats that I made were horrendous. They didn't really make any sense and it was really hard for me to sort of wrap my fingers around how to do it. and now. Same on the other side. I also like looking at the instructions and watching other people do it. I thought, oh my God, how am I ever gonna remember this? But once you've, you've done it a few times, you, you will remember. So now we've got the four folds along here and the two diagonal folds. We're gonna turn it and do one more half fold here. So I've never really done origami before. I just saw these origami bats online and thought that they looked really cute. And I am the crazy bat lady, so I figured I should know how to make origami bats. <laughs> so we're gonna do another long edge into the middle here, but this time we're only gonna do it on the one side. So we're gonna leave that other side open. It's much easier to do this when you don't have one inch claws but um, if for any reason you can't push down with your nail or your hand hard enough you can always use like a pencil or something to help make those lines really crisp because the more crisp they are the easier it's going to be. So now we're going to take if you can see here this side hasn't been folded this side has has had the double fold so this is where we're going to take these two corners here and fold them into the middle. So now we flip it over again and these two pre-folds here on the straight edge are gonna, are gonna fold in like this and this top section here we sort of I just sort of put my hand like this to stop it otherwise if you go like this it's just gonna go up flat and we want that to bend inwards so it's gonna come together uh, sort of like this and then this top section is gonna come down so I'll just show you again these side parts come in 
and this point comes down to the middle like so. Um, again, I just, let's make sure every edge here is super, super tight. So now we have this sort of kite shape. Uh, we're gonna take these two corners here and here and fold those into the middle. I'm sure this has a specific type of fold name that I have no clue what it is because like I said, I only learned how to make these because, well, bats. And so this one as well. So this kind of makes like a, a kind of kite shape, if you will. Straighten those edges. So along this top line here, this is optional, but I just bend it down a little bit, forward or backward, doesn't matter, just to create sort of a pre uh, fold line there, if you will. Because what we're gonna do now is open up those two flaps that we just made, lift that up, and this is gonna come together like so. That's the reason why I've done this little fold here, just so when you push that back, you sort of know where you're pushing it back to. Sorry, I do apologize. I have not made a bat with claws quite this long. So we're learning together. Okay, so we fold that up like that and then we fold that back down. So this next part, if you lift it up and you sort of, it's hard to explain, but these parts, you'll be able to just sort of slide them off um, like so to create a large square again. And this bit's a little bit tricky. So basically there's a line here and here on both sides that we're gonna be folding it in. And I just remember it as you fold in, you fold out, you fold in. And we're gonna do that on both sides that I'll just show you slowly. So in, out, and in. So basically we've created these two little triangle flaps on the side and then we're going to do the same on the other side as well and again once you've done this a few times you'll be able to do this in in no time at all I'm just going slowly so you you can sort of see because that step was one that when I was reading the instructions I was like that makes no sense to me so now we have the double sort of opening mouth here and the next thing we want to do is get rid of these four little triangles on the side so the way that we do that is exactly the same as before we're basically going to fold that up. And instead of using the pre-line up here, we're going to use this sort of mid-line here where the top of the triangles are. So you do one at a time, fold that open, like so, and then push in the triangle, close it, and that's made one of those little triangles disappear. So now we're going to do the exact same thing with the other three. Fold that in as tight as you can against the line open it up, fold it in. The bottom ones won't go in as tight because there's that sort of thick part of paper there that stops it, but it doesn't matter. We're just trying to get rid of them. It doesn't have to be too perfect, this part. And the last one here. I think the more you make them and the more mistakes you make, you'll figure out how to sort of fix the mistakes as you go, if that makes sense. Because every person that's following this along right now is probably doing something slightly different. So now we have the triangle here and we have the one flap here and then two, what are gonna become ears later, two separate flaps here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold it in half, but we push up just the top flap first and then flip it over and we take this top point down to the bottom. So we're basically taking that top part with us and leaving the other two on the other side of the bat. So it doesn't look like much now, but this is the part where we start making it look like a bat. So this part is going to become the bat's head. And this bit is probably, I would think, the trickiest out of the whole thing. So just watch, watch this bit a couple of times. I'll try and explain it as best as I can. 
So we're going to take this point down to this corner here. And you want to, so it's basically starting from this point here. So you're going to pull that really tight and push down. So you're just creating a line here. And now we're going to do the same on the other side. So this corner down to that one there. Okay, so now we've got a cross here. I'm going to flip it upside down. This bit here, I sort of push down again as well, just because it's going to make the next step easier. And now this is the bit that's hard because you sort of fold it in on itself. So just these first two parts of the cross, we're going to pull inwards. So you don't need to straighten out this part. You're just sort of squashing in the first half of that cross, just this little triangle at the bottom here. If that makes sense. So basically what we've created here is a raised triangle. So that's going to sort of act as the bat's chin, I guess. And then what we do is we sort of just push it in on itself like, like this. So, I mean, again, it's very tricky. This part I, I struggled with, especially now with my, with my nails on. Um, but once you've done it a few times, it, it's second nature. So then we just wanna, this crease here and here, we just wanna push on those. So you can either push it side to side just to make that a little bit stronger. And then we open that up again. And this point here is gonna become the bat's chin. So we're basically flattening out this top part. So I'm trying to do it where you can see it without my nails in the way. Sort of push that down like so. And that creates the bat's face. Obviously bat's faces aren't that long. So we flip it over and I put this tip down to the bottom here. You don't have to do that. You can make it as long or as short as, as you want. Um, and that will just all depend on the size of the face. So that's the shape of the bat's face. Again, if I had folded it down here, he would have had a, a more squished face or a more elongated face. So that's his face there. Now this is gonna become his body and micro bats are pretty small and tiny, cute little creatures. So we're gonna make him a little bit thinner. So these little side sections here, we're gonna fold in again, similar to before, into the middle line here, like sort of like that kite shape. And again, this is another another step that you have a little bit of creative freedom in how wide or fat you make the bat's body. I usually take it right up to the line or just a little bit less. Once you've created that fold there, you're going to unfold it and tuck it in underneath. So again, we're just sort of getting rid of that excess paper. And you can see this side of his body. Now we'll do the same with the other. And also tucking it under there sort of gives it a little bit of volume as well. It gives him a little bit of a tummy, which I mean, micro bats are basically just wings, little chicken nuggets with wings. They're so small. So I'm gonna do the same on this side, tuck it underneath. I'm sure however you do it, it will come out looking cute. So now that we've given him a slightly smaller body, we're gonna give him his ears. So we turn it over and these two flaps before that I said were the ears, they will go up like ears like that. But obviously we don't want them to have rabbit ears like that. We want them to go out on a slight angle. So what I normally do is I, I, I fold them and I sort of line up the ear with this sort of back fold here. And I do that on both sides. And that's just, again, to make sure that they're even. You don't have to do it like that. You can have them sort of up more. You could have them out a lot more. It's personal preference, but that's just a good guide to, to get the ears semi-even. Okay, so now that we've got the bat's body reasonably how we want it, we're gonna get started on the wings. Obviously bats don't have a straight wings like this. So these two lines here, we're gonna fold that point underneath like so. Like that. 
I'm going to do that on the other side as well. This point always makes me giggle because it just reminds me of a transformer for some reason. So this is like the bat transformer stage. Now we're going to do another fold on both sides here. And we're going to take this straight edge here and we're going to line that up with this triangle shape there. Sort of like, like so. And that's just going to create the different parts of the wings. I'm going to do that on the other side as well. Okay, so now we unfold those and we're starting to sort of get that wing shape. Again, this next part is, you, you don't have to do it like this, but we're basically going to fold little rivets in each of these four segments of wing. And this first fold, because it's folded backwards, I like to fold it forwards. It just makes the next step a lot easier for me. So I fold those two bits forward like that. And again, I don't know any of the technological words for this, but basically what we're doing is making pleats. So I turn the bat upside down just because it's easier for my hands that way. And we start with the first pleat here and we're basically taking that ridge into here. So I'll show you what I mean. So we just fold it in on itself like that and create the first pleat. Then obviously we have two more to do. So you do the same thing, you're folding it to that same section there. And the third one. There's not really, I mean, once you know how to do it, you can play around. You don't have to actually fold over this last bit here, but I like the way it looks when that part's pleated as well. So that's just another sort of option for you to do. And then when we open that up, we're starting to get that sort of bat wing shape along the bottom there. And it obviously moves as well, which is what we want. So I'm going to do the same on the other side. And again, like this, this was one of those steps that when I first did it, I was wondering why it was so difficult. Um, and now it just, it's almost like my fingers sort of know how to manipulate the paper exactly how I want them to. So don't be discouraged if, you know, it takes you five minutes just to do this one step because I probably took that long the first time I made it as well. So now the bat has its little wings and some tutorials will stop there and, you know, that's, I mean, it looks like a bat and, you know, if you make it like this and you're happy with that, then that's awesome. But there are a couple of little tips and tricks that I do just to make it look a little bit more realistic. Um, so the first one that I do is I want to get rid of this harsh edge here because bats don't have super broad shoulders like that. And the way you do this is you sort of open it up here and I think it's called a U-fold, but you basically just sort of manipulate the paper into a U shape and that gives it more, more of that sort of organic bat wing shape. So I'll do that on the other side. This is also one of those fiddly steps that if you've never done origami before, you're probably thinking, how do I do this? And I haven't done it super well here, but you get the idea. So that gets rid of that harsh edge there. Another thing that I do is, if, if you want to, is I add the little hooks. I sort of bend the top of the wing there just to give the bat, I guess that would, that would be the bat's thumb on either side. And again, just, just that little bit of extra finesse makes it look a little bit more realistic, I think a little bit better. So I've done terrible U-folds there, but I think that's partly because of my nails. It's making it a little bit difficult for me to get my fingers in there. The next thing that I do to make it look more realistic is I turn the ears to the front. So I'll show you what I mean. So in the ears, there's a couple of little pockets. I sort of just put my thumb in that first one there, and then I just twist the whole ear towards the front. So you can see the inside of the ear and they're not, you know, just a triangle. So micro bats do have massive ears and they generally do face the front. That's how they 
use their sonar and catch all their little bugs and things like that. So we want to give him, I guess, the biggest ears to head and body ratio as we can. Uh, and then one last thing, again, it's completely optional, is this little point at the bottom and this straight edge. I just don't really like straight edge, especially on bats because there's not really any part of them that's like that. I bend it, turn it over, sorry, and then I just bend this little bit up, which is also gonna prove difficult with these nails. There we go. So yeah, so you just push that little section up there. You, again, the more you push it up, the more it's gonna sort of distort the wing. So I just do it a little bit and do with it next. One other little hack that I do, which I guess it's probably cheating in the origami world, but this the fact that this sort of flaps open, I mean, you could write a cute little message under here for someone if you wanted to make like a little back card. But if you're just wanting to, I guess, like put it on the fridge or blue tack it to your wall or something like that, I just get, a little bit of super glue which yes I guess is probably cheating but you know we made the whole bat out of paper so whatever we can put a little bit of glue on there and I just put a tiny little dab under here and just hold that down there we go and that just sort of stops it flapping up I guess and now you're good to I mean I guess if you really wanted to you could probably glue the back of the head down or glue the ears into place but I mean I guess that kind of how much of it is origami if you're gonna just glue the whole thing and yeah you can do all sorts of things with the bats once they're done you can sort of fold his little wings up if you want him to be sort of hanging upside down and roosting um, they do sort of move in and out same with the head and the ears everything sort of moves a little bit you can fold them into place and have them sort of mid-flight and things like that. And yeah, don't let the plain white paper stop you. You can, you can do like a, have done all different sorts of colors. You could do like metallic papers. You could do like a rainbow assortment of bats, anything like that. You, I mean, these ones, if you're doing it with your kids, they could even, you know, you can draw little faces and little details or paint them or something like that. But that is your basic origami bat. So here are some colourful bats that I made as well. You don't have to always choose the black, uh, especially if you have black walls or dark coloured walls. They look beautiful in any colour, any sort of paper design. Uh, here's a Valentine's card that I made. Any sort of paper crafts look great. You can stick them on basically anything. You could just blue tack them to the wall as well if you'd like. And then we also have this little bat mobile that I made. Super simple and when it spins, it sort of looks like they're flying a little bit. Uh, that would be really cute in maybe like a kid's room or something like that. Or an adult if, if you like the goth bat look. Awesome. So that's how you make an origami bat. Or that's how I make an origami bat. There is a lot of different varieties you can, you can choose to do. Once you're finished making them, other than just having super cute paper bats and something fun to do, you can use them in other crafts. Here's a Valentine's card I made. Uh, any sort of paper crafts, the bats look really cute on. You can just blue tack them to the wall, have them cascading up a wall or something like that. They look quite cute. There's also some rainbow bats here that I made as well. Uh, don't have to use black. You could use metallic paper, pattern paper, anything your imagination tells you you should do. We also have um, a little wall hanging here that I made and also a little bat mobile that I made because they look really good hanging. Uh, but yeah, the possibilities are endless. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you subscribe and like the channel and I'll see you soon for another video.